Hi. Hi, family. How are we doing? So I really hope that you're hearing me clearly now. I just want to talk about the title that you see there, the attitude of musicians in the house of the Lord. Yeah. So I'll wait until you come on and then I'll start. And as you join, you're welcome to share, by the way. And if you'll be watching the rebroadcast, you're also welcome to share. Thank you so much. Let me just use this opportunity, by the way, to thank those of you who continue to share the contents produced by Shadeen Anglin Ministries International. Of course, I cannot reach people without you, of course, after the Holy Spirit, because he's number one in everything. So I just want to thank the Holy Spirit for being my best friend, my number one supporter, my biggest fan. But then I want to thank you after you, the people who continue to share without me having to say share. And, you know, because of you, the messages and contents have been spreading widely to the honor and glory of God, our Father. Hallelujah. I love him. Amen. So as you join, I'm just going to ask you to hit that share button quickly so that this can be heard by all those the Lord intends to hear. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hi, Jasmine. Jasmine says, I've been calling you, but not responding to me. Uh, please just send a message. I know that I am having a little bit of backlog in terms of responding to messages, but it is not deliberate. Please understand that there are scores of individuals trying to reach out and uh, I'm just one person. So just send a message, Jasmine, indicating what is going on and I will respond to you as soon as I get the chance. Amen. So as you join, just make sure you're sharing in another minute i will speak that which is in my heart hallelujah hallelujah all those who are saying that oh hi jason look at you i've not seen you in ages how are you doing sir hi stacy hi andy hi cindy hi everyone Hi, Latoya. Thank you so much, Sister Sheila, for sharing. God bless you. Hallelujah. All right, so let's get into it. As the title suggests, the subject of this little talk is the attitude of musicians in the house of God. Listen. Gone are the days when people are playing the instruments in the sanctuary because they love to minister unto God with that gift that he has given to them. And we know we're in an era where, you know, people want to be compensated for their work because that's what it has become. It's a work. And we all know it's ministry and we cannot do certain things without money. But let me say this. While I understand that, and it's true, at the same time, there's an issue with the attitude of those individuals who have taken the decision to, to actually utilize their gifts by playing the drum or the keyboard or whatever it is in the house of the Lord. It's better. A musician says to a woman of God or a man of God, look, I charge X, Y, Z per hour. Or if what is being proposed is not something acceptable, it's better you say to them, I can't do it and I won't do it. Than for such a musician to come into the house of the Lord and to sit around the instruments with the wrong attitude. It's better you say you're not going to come find someone else than to come into the house of the Lord with a bad attitude. This is part of the reason the worship experience is not as glorious and intense as it ought to be in many instances. 
Because the persons who are supposed to helping us to go into the presence of the Lord, the musicians who play a critical role in the worship experience, they come into the house of God with this terrible attitude. Everybody wants to be paid. Even people who are not playing music, everybody just, you do anything. You fix a mic, you want to be paid. You fix something on the computer, you want to be paid. To screw in a bulb, you want to be paid. It's sad that this is what the church experience has come to. And all I'm saying is this, because it has become the norm and it's the culture now for everything to come with a cost, a price is being put on everything. There's a demand for money on everything you can possibly think of in the house of the Lord these days. So that has become normalized. So I have to just get it. You see, as an outsider who never churchy churchy, I may not know how church things go, church business, church runnings. I'm not churchy churchy. Okay. So I had to come into the kingdom and observe how you people function. Okay. So I get to understand that when it comes on to doing anything for God, I must be prepared to go into pocket. And I understand that. But here's where the issue is with God. Because you see, him already see the, the, the culture. Him already see the culture. And he's already responding to it the way he responds to it. But, but watch that part here. That has taken me aback. And, and the point that I wish to raise. It's better a person says, no, I ain't going to play. I ain't going to come. Than to come with the wrong attitude. Call pastor and tell pastor you can't make it or you won't do it. Call first lady, ring her up, wake her up. If she answer, is so. If she doesn't answer, send her a message and tell her first lady, I can't come tomorrow because X, Y, Z. I beg you please, by the mercies of the living God to do that, it's better you do that than for you to show up and you come with the wrong attitude because either you think you're being underpaid or you're not paid what you are worth because it's all about money. And I'm saying to you, it's better you just step aside and don't come and don't be a part of the worship experience because if you come, you're going to corrupt it, you're going to poison it, you're going to spoil it. Your attitude is going to spoil it. So just don't come. Okay? than to come under pretense and stop the people from entering the presence. Because not only do the singers help to usher us into the presence, but the musicians play a critical role as well. Let me tell you where I'm at. This is where I'm at. I feel, is it because the churchy churchy musicians, and, and, and just so you know, I might sound like I'm speaking broadly and generally, but you know that this is what is happening in many in instances. It's not in all cases. So please do not leave here misquoting me, okay? We all know that this is not the case everywhere, just so you know. But those individuals to whom this applies, they know themselves. Okay, wherever in the world, in whichever church, in whatever denomination, whatever. Okay, I'm now feeling like it's best I ask someone who is out there in the world who have nothing to do with this church, church thing that has become so corrupt and politicized and monetized than to have a church, church person to play for me. If I want someone to play the keyboard, if you do hear me say, come and I need someone to help with the keyboard, I'd rather pay someone who is out there in the world who have nothing to do with the religiosity, nothing to do with all these rules and all these things that have infiltrated the house of God and the worship experience. I'd rather take out a strange, come stranger, come. Come person who not filled with no Holy Ghost. I'd rather work with you than someone who claims to be a child of God that comes into the house of God with the wrong attitude. A better someone who is called a babe in Christ. Someone who knows nothing about Christ but is humble enough to play. Humble enough to learn in, in the presence of God. It's better I have an outsider like that come and, and do the playing of the instruments than to have someone who is so up into themselves and up into this monetized culture 
who refuses to play except he or she is being paid what they deserve. It's like me saying, I'm not coming to preach unless you pay me what I deserve. Can you imagine if I said that? Can you imagine if I say to someone, I'm not going to deliver those people unless you pay me what I deserve. What if I were to say those things? What if every minister was to say that? So respectfully speaking, I want you to understand that I'm feeling like it is better to work with some outsiders who are not churchy churchy, who have the right attitude, than to work with some churchy churchy religious people who come into the house of God acting as though they're obligated or people are obligated to them. And because of their dirty attitude, they spoil everything. Musicians especially, as I said, who play such a critical role in worship. Listen, it's better you don't come. Better you don't show. I better you, it's better you just chicken out than to come with the wrong attitude. Tomorrow is Sunday. It's Sunday for many people already, depending on their time zone. We need to cut this thing out. It's either you're going to play with it. Listen, I, I gave the word of the Lord at the start of the year. And I'm going to repost it on my page. The word of the Lord for the year 2023. What was the word? If you are serving him, serve him with the right attitude. So not only are we now having to deal with people on the pulpit throwing words and releasing gossip. They have no message. They have no inspiration from the Holy Spirit. They're not dissecting any word. They're starving God's people. They're sitting there making them cold, corrupting them spiritually. Not only do we have to deal with those shepherds, but here we are having to deal with the poor attitude of musicians because of money everything is monetized that's why the people on the outside think the church has become a business because really and truly when you think about it everything has become monetized to screw in a nail to lift a rug in the house of the living God who has favored us, given us jobs, given us promotions, given us the gift. Sometimes we have our gifts and people out there are using us and would never give us what we're, they wouldn't even give us a dime. And we come into the house of God and people are patronizing us or are compensating us somehow because people understand their time. And who get the dirty part of the stick? Pastor and the first lady, bishop or the apostle, the head of the church, the minister, the man of God, the woman of God. But the people out of road who are taking advantage of them, they're not giving them the attitude. Listen, do not come. Listen, I speak to you as a servant of the living God who qualifies me to speak the Holy Spirit of the living God who dwells in me. I'm not a part of the churchy, churchy, religious thing. I'm not a part of it. Just so you know, never been a part of it, will never be a part of it. And I'm here to look you in your eyes and I'm saying to you, come into the Lord's house with the right attitude. You see, if your attitude don't right, don't come. And I feel like ministers, women and men of God should take this stance. If you asked someone to come and play for you and them attitude don't right, it's better on a sing and clap and stamp on the feet and make the music with your bodies than to have them come with the wrong attitude in the presence of the Lord. If being underpaid or not being paid is what is going to spoil what could be someone's breakthrough moment or someone's miraculous moment, I beg you by the mercies of God, take my foolish advice and tell them, do not come. It's okay. Don't come. These are my few words. You can always take it or leave it. But I know what I'm going to do going forward. When I ask for a musician, now I feel like I prefer to work with some people who have nothing to do with church. Because sometimes I find that those individuals 
are the ones who carry the humble spirit. And humility has nothing to do with money here. I'm talking about people who will come and just because they know this is a God thing, they will shape up their attitude even if it's just for the moment. Maybe when they go back through the doors of the church, they'll turn into them true selves. But as long as they are in the presence of God, they'll understand what is required. So I rather deal with some people who are foolish in our eyes, but they are wise when it comes to the things of God. Amen. God bless you. It's a suggestion. And it's always, it's also how I feel I will be moving forward. God bless you. Yes, Kareem. These ones, they can be ministered to. And who knows? Their souls might just be saved because of saying yes to coming. Amen.